Up next, let's give a warm Elevate Daytona Beach welcome to B.B. LeBlanc. Good evening, Daytona. I am very happy to be here with you tonight and share a little piece of history. Once upon a time, there was a little piece of painted concrete. Would you like to hear that story? Yeah. Okay. Let me take you back in time a little and to a different continent. Go ahead. World War II had ended in 1945. Germany was divided up into four zones of occupation by the winning Allied forces, the US, England, France, and the Soviet Union. Berlin, the capital, was in the Soviet zone and also divided. The construction of the Berlin Wall began the night of August 13th, 1961, because at that point, thousands of people were leaving communist oppression in the Soviet sector. Up until that day, people had been able to cross between the sectors, but on that next morning, they found themselves cut off from work, um, school, family, and friends. In his famous speech in June 1963 in West Berlin, John F. Kennedy declared to the world, I am a Berliner. It was a clear statement of support for West Germany in the wake of the construction of the Berlin Wall and a big morale boost for Berliners fearing Soviet occupation. I was born three months after that speech, two years after the wall was built. I grew up with it. The wall running through the middle of my hometown became part of my everyday reality. There were houses on one side of a street we couldn't cross because the wall was there. We couldn't just get into the car and go to the countryside because we were enclosed by a wall guarded by sharpshooters and watchtowers, patrolled by guard dogs, a strip of minefields called the Death Strip. My dad's brother and his family lived in East Berlin. We could go visit them. They could never come visit us. We had to apply for a pass, a lengthy process that would allow us to go through one of the checkpoints. Now, as a child, that was always a very scary process. The border police would make us get out of the car, they'd lift up the back seat to check underneath, they'd stick a long flexible rod into the gas tank, they'd check the underside of the car with a little mirror on wheels to see, to make sure we weren't smuggling anything. Because we were only allowed to bring certain things like clothes and food and um, any printed material, for example, was considered illegal capitalist propaganda. And knowing my dad would always smuggle things over made the whole process even scarier. <laughs> We knew the apartment my aunt and uncle lived in was bugged and suspected the neighbors were informants for the Stasi, the East German Ministry for State Security. The Stasi has been known to be one of the most effective and repressive um, intelligence and secret police to ever have existed. One of their main tasks was spying on its population, mainly through a vast network of citizens turned informants. A simple joke about the government would be enough grounds for them to arrest you, incarcerate you, and interrogate you until you were willing to sign an agreement to work for them. So my parents would go for long walks by the river if they wanted to talk freely. There's so much more I could tell you about growing up in West Berlin, but that exceeds the frame of tonight's event. So let me fast forward. In 1989, I was a flight attendant for Lufthansa based in Frankfurt, West Germany. One day my mom called and said, the wall just fell. I didn't, couldn't comprehend because I didn't think I'd ever see that wall coming down. My roommates and I jumped into the car, started driving towards Berlin. On the autobahn, we could see trolleys, the East German cars, coming in the opposite direction, which we had never seen there before. Now, remember, we had to drive through East Germany to get to Berlin. We got to the first checkpoint in Helmstedt late that night, cold and dark November night, and it should have been deserted. But what we found here was a party. West Germans were welcoming East Germans through the checkpoints with hot tea and hot chocolate, and there was dancing and laughing and crying as we all became part of history in the making. We kept driving to Berlin later that night and headed straight to the Brandenburg Gate. The Brandenburg Gate had been a symbol of German division for the past 28 years. It had been no man's land. Neither West Berliners nor East Berliners could walk through it. On this night, we did. This year, the world will celebrate the 30-year anniversary of the fall of the Berlin Wall. And since, <laughs> since, 
since that day, whenever I feel like I'm facing insurmountable challenges, I pull out this little piece of painted concrete and I remind myself of those days of my reality crumbling, of the course of world history changing right before my eyes. And I know anything is possible. If I could leave you with this tonight, go visit your families because you can. Go travel the world because you can. Go live your dreams because you can. Thank you.